Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I am continuing with my fan art series for a game called Sky Children of the Light. Today I'll be painting a picture from the Hidden Forest, which is the third realm in the game. It's a beautiful place. I really wish I could play the Hidden Forest music from Sky Children of the Light. It's really beautiful, really tranquil. And I really enjoy it but obviously that's copyrighted so I have to make do with some other music in the background. So with watercolour you start with your lightest colours and then work your way through your mid-tones and your, your dark shades so I'm currently just painting in this um, bridge that goes over the stream here in, um, in this realm. So I've started with cobalt turquoise because that's this light area right on the rim of the bridge and I'm dropping in um, darker values with ultramarine. I'm also now putting in cadmium yellow which is the light which is shining out from this little stone Japanese lantern. In watercolour you work from light to dark and that's because it's a transparent medium. So unlike um, oil or acrylic or gouache, you can't put lighter values on top of darker values because the darker value would just show through. So you have to start with your light values and preserve them. So that means don't paint over the top of them or cover them or use, um, you can use a masking fluid to keep areas white. But in this painting, I'm just putting in light sap green where there's lighter values. I've sketched all my sketches months in advance and I do that quite often. That's because I find um, it's really helpful to have a sketch to go to and paint if you've not got much time for painting if you've got some sketches good to go then that means you don't only have to really find the time to paint them whereas if you were sketching and then painting obviously you have to find more time to do all of that in one sitting another way in which that helps me i find is that you know once i've sketched something then um, I go back to it later, maybe weeks or months later, and I'll notice things, things that are not quite right. I sort of look at them with fresh eyes and then I see things that I need to adjust before I start painting. And that really helps me, I find. I'm using a mixture here of Payne's Grey and a little bit of Indigo, just to add a bit more blue into the sky and the trees in the background. These trees in the sky are, are actually dead trees. Um, it's an old forest which is dying and um, that's why the trees are grey and not brown because they're not alive. just working my way now from sort of my lighter areas to my darker shadows. One of the things that's important to remember is that um, if you want your highlights to show as real highlights it's, it's better to darken your dark values and then those highlights pop out more. I really like this um, little series of small paintings. You know it's very easy to work in one area and while that's drying move to another area because they're like small areas with little bits of paint you don't have to wait very long for them to dry and that means you can just work your way around the painting whereas if sometimes when you're working wet on wet and on big pieces you know you have to wait ages for the layers to dry so that you can go back and add another layer on top and it can take a long time so, you know, having these little paintings, these little sketches, just to kind of have a little go and have a little paint, it's, it's, it's nice, really. I like painting because it's mindful and because it's relaxing. 
so having something to kind of paint just a little painting like this do one and then move on and do another at another time it's really helpful so now I'm painting the little lantern itself it's kind of really glowing so I've given it a, like a base coat of yellow so that will show through later now just adding a little bit of detail in the background I think it's quite important not to add too much detail to the background because that tends to draw the eye there you want people to look at the foreground primarily you know you want the, the foreground to stand out the most so um, it's important to make sure the background is kind of vague and the foreground is much more detailed I'm adding in more indigo now just to deepen this colour. I really really like indigo, it's one of my favourite colours, I, I love the range of it. You can have really deep dark inky blue or very light sort of almost grey blue which is really useful for shadows, for like cool shadows. I'm sort of following the colours from my, my reference photograph quite closely here but um, you could change the values of course you could make it you can make it really light and airy and bright or you can make it darker and gloomier it's entirely up to you it's your painting at the end of the day but I just like to uh, make it feel like the game that I play because it's a really nice little space and it's good memories Just adding a few more details in the background, but like I say, don't add too much detail there. You don't want to pull the background forwards. So I'm just adding a little bit more perspective as one of the cliffs is a little bit closer than the other. So it just adds a little bit more depth. And I'm finishing off now by finishing the details on the lantern. So I'm adding burnt umber and a little sapia to this little lantern but I'm not filling it all in because parts of it are glowing in the light. Now I'm just going back in and I'm adding more depth and, and stronger values where they're needed really into this kind of river area and also into the shadows just to darken them. That'll make the highlighted areas pop a little bit more and they'll look lighter as you deepen the shadows. So now I'm definitely just finishing up, adding a few more shadows onto this little lantern and then I'll be finished. So I do hope you enjoyed this little mini painting and I'll see you at the next one. Thank you. Bye.